call the monthly meeting of the Surrey County Admin Committee meeting to order. Uh, roll call, please. Reed Chuman. Dale Schleter. Here. Ron Kingsley. Here. Tom Dunn. Here. Recognizing Mr. Buckholz. Okay, thank you. Certification of compliance with open meetings law. This meeting has been noticed to the public and news media as required by section 1924 of Wisconsin. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Got her deal. You want me to go? Keep going? Or? Sure. Okay. <clears throat> meeting agenda. Any changes or? Comments? Do I have a motion to approve? Both. Mr. Duffy? Second. Second by. Everybody in favor say aye. Aye. Motion passed. Uh, public comments. This time, members of the public will give, be given the opportunity to address the committee. Uh, please. Keep it to the three minute rule. Linda Zilmer, 902 Hollingville Lane versus Wisconsin, Edgewater uh, property owner and taxpayer. Uh, public comment today. Um, I have two issues. One has to do with agenda item seven, the Muni Code adoption process. Um, appreciate the work that's been going on, I guess, for years now on. Uh, getting the county ordinances codified. Uh, I found an email from 2018 where I was following up with Mr. Hoff on that. Um, I, it was a recommendation I had suggested based on what I had seen the village of Birchwood go through. It's not just for ease of access, but there's a significant cost savings with publication fees. Uh, certain ordinances are required to be published if they have forfeitures or penalties. Um, I won't go off on my concerns on that, but I do think that uh, just presenting the code to the board in December and not having enough time to really have discussions in committees in January, uh, that it's not ready for the county board's approval in January. I think this is not like the comprehensive plan. These are ordinances and that each committee in February should take a look at their sections um, also, what I have not heard about the adoption process for the Code of Ordinances, um, which I have found in Statutes Chapter 66, and the Towns Association and the League of Municipalities describe, you know, so that it's understandable, but I could not find in the Counties Association, is that there has to be a process. The public has to have access to an ordinance uh, at least two weeks in advance of when it's going to be acted on. So I'm sorry I could not provide you with specifics, but I would encourage that this adoption of the full Muni code, Muni code not happen in January, but that it gets committee and board discussion. And then the other thing is with the transition with uh, losing county board supervisor knowledge. Okay, please wrap it up. Your three yes, minutes are up. Retirements of folks like um, Mr. Bassett and uh, Supervisor McCoy. And then also the retirement of the county administrator. I think it's very important for past minutes and agendas to be searchable on the county's website. And so in order to make that happen, there needs to be a kind of a process at the county level to reload minutes and agendas in a Okay, I've let you run over for 30 format. seconds, so okay, you're so done. Thank you. Okay. Approval of minutes from previous meeting. We have a motion to approve by Mr. Kinsley, second by Mr. Duffy. Everybody in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Is that for both sets or there's just the one? Yeah, two sets of minutes. Two sets. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Okay, motion passed. You want to take it over, please? Oh, you're doing great. Oh. <laughs> okay, Unicode certification update. Yes, thank you. Um, as we talked about in every uh, committee, um, the code of ordinances uh, proofs are 
out on the website and on the agenda. Uh, the link has been provided to you and uh, email has been sent out to department directors and county board members to review the ordinances. Keep in mind that these are not new ordinances. They are, they are your existing ordinances that have been reorganized and um, statutory references updated. Um, so there's not um, anything new there. It's existing ordinances uh, in a different format. So um, everyone has been reviewing these uh, the last uh, month here, and we had it on the agenda for each uh, committee to review. And uh, we'll submit that to the county board for final approval. If you've got any changes uh, that you find that need to be made, if there's anything incorrect or not current, please notify uh, the county clerk or myself, and we'll make those adjustments uh, before it's presented to the board. Yeah. Yeah, please. Tom, is this this is a, a code then that can be amended as we go, right? It's like a mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, any of your ordinances that we can address and amend. Yeah, any of your ordinances you can change at any time at your prerogative. Thank you. Okay, any other questions for Tom on the code? Okay, Veteran Service Department report. Great, good morning. <clears throat> so for, uh, for December, we had 319 phone calls, 238 letters and 61 office visits. For the year, uh, we had submitted 119 disability claim, uh, disability and pension claims, and uh, received retroactive payment of uh, three, a little over $360,000 for claims decided in the veterans' favor. We made our training, we're up to date, and it is now a new year, so we get to start all over again with that. But um, any questions? Yes, yeah. Gary, people have spoken with you about, um, you know, we're going to tear down your current building there now. Right. And um, have you submitted any ideas where you'd like to be? Because initially they thought they would move you where, Tom? Somewhere downstairs or? No, either, over here? either in this space or the child support. We're working between uh, criminal justice and the veterans personnel to see what space works the best. Sure. Um, so that was one option. Um, recently, uh, we've had discussions with the Health and Human Services about moving the ADRC down to the uh, vacated area in the Oasis side of the building. Um, and uh, an idea was floated that perhaps there's space for veteran services down there as well. Uh, that's something that we had contemplated earlier in the process, but it was too much space just for veterans alone. But uh, it might work well to have a more welcoming um, lobby area and um, area for um, that's more handicap accessible as well uh, for the veteran services as well as uh, the, the clientele for the ADRC. So it's not, uh, you know, in health and human services, which I know that Gary is uh, in veteran services generally don't like to be in that same area. Um, but either the area here or the area down there. Um, Gary's looking at the pros and cons of each to determine what uh, what's most suitable. Um, so we've been kind of tossing some ideas around there, and, and we're working through some of the intricate details of you know what sure. what works and what doesn't and whatnot. So the pros and cons to each side, and that's kind of where we're at. Gary and and uh, Paul Grahovic went down to that building yesterday to uh, look at space and kind of start reviewing possibilities. Sure. And so Gary, you more comments. Go ahead. Gary, do you feel that you're compatible with like ADRC and adult protective services? I think that's um, who's the other player there. Yeah, it's only that's only two of us. We we do intertwine uh, uh, probably as far as an uh, agency that's providing uh, it's like social type services. We do intertwine with with the ADRC more than anybody else. The um, so my my concern my concerns are the well I don't we, the space the space is is there's no I don't think there's five cubic foot difference between this room and what we have you know right now physically set up at at, uh, at Oasis that now that can be easily remedied I think it all depends on which way the you know county goes as far as 
there is a huge open area in, in that build, in that building. Um, so, but right, but right now, I mean, if you went, you know, room by room by room, which is three rooms and a, and a little uh, entranceway area that can probably get sealed off. It's like I said, about, you know, I don't think it's any different with this capacity. The, I guess the question comes down, what I'm concerned about is, is my, my veterans, our veterans, um, are, are loud and boisterous and, uh, they, they have different versions of English than some people. And some of them, uh, are, are, uh, drug addicted. Some of them are on drugs. Um, some of them are alcohol, you know, and, and I mean, that, that's not all of them, obviously, but it happens. And I would say like once a month, I will get somebody that comes in that's quite, quite loud and, and could be offensive to somebody else. And so my concern, this is my concern is if, if, uh, if we can play well with others, if I can have enough breathing space to be able to grab that veteran and pull them into the office without the police being called. Um, that then then that'll work. Other than that, I would rather you know you, you see what I'm saying. Because if you slam the door, if they call the police, anybody calls the police on these veterans, you slam the door on 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 help, and that's unacceptable. So I, I'm not concerned about I'm not you know like I said I'm not concerned about the drugs, I'm not concerned about the alcohol and the fact of you know sc scared of something happening. Um, you know, there's there's been a couple of occasions where you know it's it's been touch and go, but I, I've never called cops. Okay, we've taken care of it. We've got what they needed, and we moved them along. That's that's my concern. Thank you. So there, yeah. So I, I don't know how else to put it without uh, yeah nicely. So. Well, I think we know what you're talking about. So. Yeah. Maybe it, it, and it happens maybe once a month. That's yeah. it, you know, 12. But, you know, if, 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 you know, and I don't know what my cool hearts in crime, you know, that I'd be working with are going to do, you know, I, I, I'm less concerned. Yeah, I don't know, you know, so I don't know. And then, you know, their, their concern was, well, we have some people that, you know, are offended by, by swearing. Yeah, I understand that. There's a lot of people that are offended, you know. But if you can give me a couple of minutes to get them in, you know, settle down and in and take care of it, it'll it'll stop. It's it's not it's no different than life for any of us, you yeah. know. But you don't want to hear. I just don't want any false expectations. So for the most part, the people are very respectful and come in and you know. But if you don't want to hear swearing, don't go to the grocery store <laughs> because if you hear swearing in there. Uh, but realistically, is there some sound dampeners or barriers or well, there, insulation there, there are devices out there. I, I was and thanks. I, I was thinking about that yesterday too. There's there's a uh, um, noise canceling devices that you put outside your you know your office mm -hmm. and and uh, that will stop stuff like that. Um, and that's that's like over the counter. You can find it online and what have you. Um, but the really what the way it's physically set up over there right now i i don't i i don't have enough storage i'm gonna have to change stuff around or we'll have to adapt stuff and tim's looking at that we talked to tim yesterday on the phone about that it's just going to take a little time to to i mean honestly to to, to see what we can and cannot do and whether it work you know it's physic physically i'll make it work i can't but if i'm fighting if i'm fighting with the other internal staff over the, the veterans behavior that's something i can't fix you know what I, you know what i mean i can only do so much mm -hmm. i can't i can't guarantee but um yeah i'll make whatever it is work so great yep okay thank you Gary. and keep us informed so. just a little bit there's also your safety out there. And if you're down there or up here, you're going to have the same language coming in. It's just, we all know that. But thank you for pointing it out. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions for Gary?
Okay, information technology department report. Uh, Good morning. Good morning. We've got our report. Um, no big projects, a lot of uh, operational staff changes. I've been busy with that. Um, we did start um, cloud backup, which I know makes a lot of people's eyes glaze over, but it it helps us in case we have a catastrophe here with our data, we have another place we can retrieve from far off site from here. So we're able to finally budget for that and, and start making use of it uh, this week, actually. Um, the uh, CCAP fellow is actually here right now. And as soon as this meeting's done, I'm gonna help him with uh, getting the DAR set up, reset up in the small courtroom. Other than that, uh, I'll take any questions. Thank you for all you do, Mike. Sure. Much appreciated. Okay. This is no questions. Thanks, Mike. Okay. Human resources report. Good morning. Rose. Yep. Good morning, Rose. And my report. Any questions? Hey, moving right along, administrator's report. Thank you. I did uh, submit a report. Um, it's in front of you uh, by paper, but I'll go over a few things. Uh, the final rule for the uh, ARPA funds was released on last Thursday, uh, January 6th. Um, so that's what we've been waiting for um, to establish um, exactly the rules that we're playing by for the use of those funds that we were allocated under that uh, legislation. The 3.2 million that we received, you know, we received half of that so far, we'll receive the other half next year. Um, and under the interim rules that we were operating under, there was very specific items on uh, eligibility uh, that would require us to determine um, eligibility for uses of those funds and tracking those and whatnot. So during the comment period um, in between when the interim rule was uh, put out and the final rule uh, put out uh, last Thursday, they took in about 1500 comments, uh, them being the US Treasury, to uh, determine uh, what the final rule will be. And there was some uh, substantial changes uh, in the final rule that will be very beneficial to the county. Uh, for instance, uh, the most beneficial change in the final rule allows for a standard deduction of $10 million uh, for the use of those funds. The, the uh, standard deduction is for the revenue loss. As you recall, we talked about before that we would have had to done a calculation for um, counter, actual, counter factual revenue and compare that to actual revenue and determine if you actually lost revenue due to the pandemic. Uh, it was kind of a uh, trying to objective, objectively determine if there was revenue loss. A lot of people had, trouble calculating that and uh, you know because you have to back out federal contributions and there was interpretations as to how all that worked regardless uh, with the situation of where Sawyer County ended up uh, last year and in 2020 uh, you know we had some pretty good revenue we did have substantial um, ramifications due to the pandemic but we didn't see it so much on the revenue side so using that revenue loss formula wasn't beneficial to the county. That said, uh, now that we can use the standard deduction of $10 million, that essentially frees up the 3.2 million uh, to be used for general government services. So you could use the ARPA money for anything that the government has traditionally used to spend money on. What that means is it greatly simplifies uh, the administration of the ARPA funds on your use of those funds. Um, so as you determine your priorities for uh, how to use those funds, this is kind of a game changer in that it, it greatly expands um, the potential uses of those funds that you may contemplate. 
So now that we have the final rule, uh, you know, it'll be important to uh, determine what you feel is important, uh, how you how you determine, um, you know, how to use those funds, but it, it's going to greatly simplify um, the way that you do that. And so this, as it just came out Thursday, there's going to be more information and more FAQs put out by the U.S. Treasury uh, to interpret these final rules. You know, the final rules are 437 pages of rules, and I put it into three paragraphs on the report. So there's a lot more to it than that, but it, it really does get simplified um, with that standard deduction for uh, lost revenue. Tom, can I use it like a fund balance then? In the interim rule, you could not use ARPA funds to put into your fund balance. And with the final rule, you can determine that you have spent money for general government services, and then that, that's what you use the ARPA funds for. Uh, but then it, it kind of ends up in your fund balance. But you could still segregate that and say, you know, we're still going to use that and determine specific uses for those dollars. So just because it, it would roll into fund balance potentially doesn't mean that you can't decide how to use that money for purposes related to COVID or, or anything else that is a general government service. So, so for budget overruns and well, things keep in that mind have, that we didn't propose accurately, not under our control, like out of county placements, things that are budget busters. Well, those, you know, those are things, you know, that are in the operating budget and that's what fund balance is for. And that's why, you know, we try and maintain a fund balance of 20 to 30% to keep track of when, you know, when the economy goes down or when we have a bad year operationally, you know, that's the purpose of having a fund balance. That said, um, I kind of lost my train of thought here. The, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but we don't want to use I, I got it back now thank you the uh, we don't want to use those dollars to offset you know things that we normally do in the operating budget I mean it still should be like one time uses of those funds so that we don't end up building it into the operating budget and then when it's gone we've really got a problem it's still going to be you know those one time uses or capital items or things that that aren't affected by the operating budget in my mind that is a wiser use of the funds i have more ideas any other questions that yeah that's uh you know the art you know this is all preliminary so we're going to have more discussions uh, as we go forward here but uh this this is what we've been waiting for to, uh, to finally make some uh, final decisions on on the uses of those funds uh, the courthouse re renovation, <coughs> excuse me, we have a meeting at uh, 1 or one thirty this afternoon to meet with the architects and the uh, construction manager to go over the, the final bid documents. So those bids will be released um, and then we'll, we'll get that ball rolling and then we'll know more about how we're sitting budget wise uh, when that's complete. Been talking to our uh, financial advisor on the uh, structuring of the bond issue that we'll do to pay for this. Uh, we've been working on the official statement, which is the document that bidders and uh, uh, the rating agencies use to uh, determine our, our bond rating, as, as well as uh, those that want to buy our bonds have that information. We've got a, a meeting with the rating agency, Moody's, on March 1st. Uh, to talk about uh, the bonds, that's where we'll get our, our rate, okay. our bond rating, that is. Um, so we're looking forward to that. Um, there's a meeting this after, or right after this one for the uh, recruitment of the next administrator by the ad hoc committee. Um, had a discussion with our attorneys on the opioid settlement on uh, Tuesday, I believe. Um, we met our deadline in Wisconsin to get all of the uh, uh, agreements in or the opt-in on that agreement. Um, there's been a little bit of a delay nationwide on getting all that put to bed, but we should be receiving funds uh, in May and in July of this year. And then continuing, there's a, a timetable 
it's a multi-year kind of payout. So we don't know how much and the exact timing, but that'll come out within the next few months. That's the highlights. Questions for Tom? Let's move on to future agenda items. Anybody got any suggestions, requests? The county administrator would always be on that road. As we go through the steps, they'll stay on there. Yeah. We should probably welcome our new county treasurer. Absolutely. Where is she? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Jamie. Welcome aboard, JD. Got questions for this committee? Thank you. I do not have any questions at this time. Nice to know that your sleeves are rolled up so you can learn all you can learn. Yeah. Thank you. It's a big task. Yes, it is. We're confident you can take care of that. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. And Janine, we really appreciate you stepping up and taking this position and also that you're willing to assist in highway as they train um, your replacement there too as well. I've heard you jumped in and helped them, so I really appreciate that. No, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Other matters for discussion only? Yeah. Hey, we're adjourned. Good job. Thank you, Dale.